Morning everyone and welcome to the Fife Property Show. This Saturday morning we are discussing longer lettings and how to attract and keep great tenants for years. Joining me this morning to discuss the topic is our letting agent, Karen Marshall. Morning Karen. Good morning. How are you this lovely morning? I'm good, the sun is shining. How are you? I'm good, yep. Yeah. You've got all your um, upgrades to do at your own house today? Yes, after this I'm heading along to build some furniture, so busy day. I thought you would be. So yeah, today, today's topic, longer lettings and how to attract and keep tenants, great tenants for years. Um, so I think we'll have quite a lot of insights into uh, how to keep uh, good tenants and for a longer time frame as well and, and obviously look at increasing the longevity of a tenancy which ultimately um, every landlord and agent would like and also um, the security and stability of, of a tenancy is, is very important, important to the landlords um, and also uninterrupted income stream. Um, and tenants also want an uninterrupted home life and I think that's that's an important key thing here as a tenant's home life in a rental property is key to obviously the longevity of the, the tenancy, would you not agree? Yeah of course you want a tenant that's going to feel comfy in their home and the comfier they are the more likely they are to stay. Yeah I think you need to really make uh, make it clear to the tenant that it is their home and because it is going to be their home for the duration of the tenancy um, and that's obviously uh, if they feel comfortable and, and secure in the property, then it increases obviously the length of the tenancy. Um, I think renting a property has become a more permanent lifestyle choice uh, and tenancies are getting longer and longer. I mean, uh, I think on average, I, I used to always look at tenancies about two to three years, but I think we're looking at about three to four years now. Um, and do you agree that obviously tenancies are becoming longer rather than a lot of short term tenancies and, and continual turnarounds for properties? Yeah, we do have a lot of long-term tenants. I mean, we've had tenants in, since I started this job, which was five years ago. So there's there's tenants that have been around for a long time and they've extended well on before that. So yeah. it is, you have tenants that are very much, have made it their home, are quite happy in the property and are there for, I think we have ones that have been there for over a decade now, just because they are, they're happy in their home. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, there's tenants that I've managed for the duration of how long ever I've been uh, an agent and that's got 12 years coming up. Uh, I've been uh, with five properties and we've had tenants for longer than that. <laughs> so um, yeah, and, and they're settled. Uh, they look at the property as their home. We have a good uh, relationship. They come to us um, whenever they've got issues and we obviously have a good um, communication uh, with them as well, which is, is always key. Um, but James joining in this morning. Morning, James. Morning. So yeah, I am. Um, yeah, and I do see. Um, although sometimes we have a lot of longer term tenants, there is other other times where we see maybe quite a lot of turnover uh, in other properties. But that's that's kind of starting to fade out, and I think tenancies are becoming longer and longer. And I think that's a trend that's seen across the country. I think not just here in Fife. Um, and I think. Um, Longer tenants enjoy living in a property and uh, they feel more connected um, and they learn to love and care for it as if uh, it was their own home, um, which, like I say, for the duration of the tenancy, it is. Um, and I think the lettings market in Fife um, have a lot of high quality people looking for long term uh, rents, especially at the moment. Um, I think you'll agree with that. Obviously, the market's really busy just now, but I think like the Calibury tenants and the length of ten tenancy term they're looking for. Um, has definitely changed. Yeah, just now obviously the rental market is incredibly busy. You have so many people that are applying for one property just now. So there's a lot of people that unfortunately do have to miss out just now because obviously it can just go to one person. But under normal circumstances, we would have been happy to give it to them because they would have been completely suitable tenants. But at the end of the day, it can only go to one person. So it is, it's really hard just now to try and pick who you think is going to be the most suitable because there is such a high quality of tenants out there just now because there's so many people looking for rental properties. Yeah, I think I've done a wee bit of live um, last week on the whole uh, referencing and tenant selection process because um, there is such a high demand just now and people feel that maybe that they may be being discriminated against or excluded for certain reasons. And I mean, that is not the issue. It's because there's just such a high volume of people. There's so many people and the, there's not the high volume of stock at the moment. I mean. We do have a lot of good ones coming on at the minute, but 
um, you could only pick one tenant or one, obviously, a couple or, or family to go into one property. Um, so when you've got a really popular property and a lot of inquiries, unfortunately, not everybody's going to get it. And um, it is quite difficult. And you try to do that as uh, fairly as possible. Um, but you do need to look at all the the uh, mitigating factors of like obviously income and personal circumstances and and whether you feel the person is right for that property um, just depending on maybe its location or or obviously the, the, the general setup of where the property is or um, I mean there's like I say there's lots of different factors and it, um, it's not a decision that we just take lightly um, I see us obviously agents and and also the landlord they need to make a decision who's right for for everybody. Um, and that is what we try and do to the best of our ability. So I did do a wee bit of vlog on that, just just a quick one. So I think I think it's, I think I ended it saying be kind. <laughs> Some people forget that. Uh, students is saying here that uh, the quality of properties out there for rental helps. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think there is a lot of high quality properties coming on at the moment. We've got some really nice ones. Um, and I've been doing a lot of uh, vlogs on refurbs that we're assisting with just now, um, which are turning out amazing. Uh, the finish there was just great. Um, yeah, obviously I've been doing uh, some viewings this week at one of our ones that has just finished off having the refurb at it and the interest that we've had quite a lot of interest in it just because it's done up to such a high standard. It's really nice. It's all nice and modern. The landlord's done a really good job of having it done up to a really good standard. So it does it attract good quality tenants, people that are then going to look after it because you are giving them a nice property in the first instance. So you're kind of setting that standard as to what is to be kept like. Yeah, you definitely. Are going to be in and making it their home, but obviously you want them somebody that's going to look after the property well. Yeah, definitely. When you uh, put a property on the market and present it in such a way, you set the tone um, from right from the outset. Like this is the property. This is the kind of standard that uh, that's going to be, and it's going to be maintained to. And the tenants, or potential tenants, look at that and think, "This is where I would like to live, and this is the kind of standard of living I would like." Um, and like I say, for the outset, if they see that the landlord's providing something at a, a quality level, then they're going to obviously look to have that throughout the tenancy. Um, so it works both ways. It's quite good. And then also, who who wouldn't want a, a lovely new property, all new decorated, uh, to move into and uh, and live in as their home? Um, and yeah, and there, there's there's quite a few good ones at the moment that we've been doing and assisting with. So, and and it might seem blindingly obvious, but. A surefire way of attracting long-term tenants is to openly declare it to them. I mean, I think just now, um, obviously, we're on the private residential tenancy now in Scotland, which doesn't have any long-term fixed, the ability to fix a long-term to obviously maybe even like minimum six months a year and things like what the short assured tenancy used to be in Scotland. So I think it's you need to set that for the, for the outset. You need to set the ground rules of like we are looking for a long-term tenant. And... Um, it's our job as agent to kind of establish that and that's all part of the referencing process are you going to be long term what what brings you to want to live in this property are you coming here to work are you want it as a family home um are you going to be here two three four years or even longer um and then we could relay that back obviously to the landlord to say this person's looking to have this property for a minimum of two years or three years um and kind of set that out at the beginning as well because you can't fix tenants into long terms now in Scotland with the new private residential tenancy. So that is all part of the vetting and referencing process, which I'm sure you do quite a lot of, Karen. Yeah, obviously, like you say, you can't fix them in anymore. So you're kind of having to go by what tenants are looking for. Um, obviously, we do our pre-qualifying stage, which we ask them how long they're looking to rent for. We do have quite a lot of people that come up that they're perhaps buying. And they're considering renting just for like a couple of months, just up, up to six months until they find what they're looking for. But I mean, longevity wise, it doesn't really work out. Obviously, we want somebody that's going to be looking for a year plus at least, because I mean, it's somebody that's going to be settled in the home, make it their home, make it nice and comfy for themselves. And then it's got the landlord having that stable income side as well as opposed to tenants going in, tenants going out again. So yeah. we obviously established that in the first instance before people are even getting out to view how long they're looking to rent for. Yeah. I mean, it's not, to, I mean, ideally, obviously everybody probably wants long-term tenants. It's not to say that we exclude people that maybe want a shorter term 
Um, exactly. It kind of works hand in hand with what the landlord is looking for. So we might we have some landlords that are perhaps looking for a shorter term tenancy. So then it works well with the people that are obviously hand in hand looking for a shorter one. We don't want to put somebody into a property that's looking for a long term tenancy when the landlord's intention is not long term. They might need it back in like six months to a year for their own circumstances. So it works hand in hand with obviously balancing it out with the landlord's needs as opposed with alongside the tenant's needs as well. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, yeah, and I'd like you say it depends on maybe the landlord circumstances. We have a lot of different properties which have a lot of different factors involved and maybe a landlord's looking to rent the property while they go away and work for a year or two years or even just six months. So, um, I mean, there is we do facilitate all different length of terms um, for tenancies. So, But ideally, obviously, from an investment point of view and um, long-term passive income, landlords and investors do ideally look for long-term tenants um, and good tenants who obviously enjoy living in the property and want to stay there. And I think to try and achieve that, I mean, even like the, the rental description, like keywords we use when advertising a property as well, um, just to kind of demonstrate to them while they look at the listing that well, we are actually looking for somebody, maybe a family in here for long term, or do you mean if, it, or if it's, a, it's a nice apartment somewhere near a, a, a centre, a town centre, or city centre or whatever, um, then it's maybe geared towards a more professional couple. Um, do you know what I mean? So I think the description and how we do that on the on the listing as well, Kim, um, with uh, certain keywords to kind of demonstrate this is going to be a long term tenancy. Um, yeah, obviously the descriptions are good for obviously setting a stance out as to what you are looking for for a tenant for it and to find somebody that's going to be suitable for it. So obviously each property is going to be tailored to a different kind of market. So obviously if you're looking at like a three bedroom house, you're ideally going to attract a family for it. Um, if you're looking at more kind of one, two bedroom apartments and like a town, you're, it's going to be more kind of working professionals or students that you'll attract. So it all depends on obviously tailoring it to what the landlord is looking for with what kind of property that they have so we can obviously find the right tenants. Yeah, yeah. James just chipped in here and says he knows someone who rents just six months at a time, autumn to spring, uh, but he has property as a holiday let. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing as well. I think of if you want to uh, do obviously maybe just six months and things at a time, you, because obviously they don't have to show your tenants anymore, so you kind of just say, right, six month agreement. Because um, if you move a tenant in and say, well, I'm going to, then I'm going to holiday let it, um, or I'm going to come back and live in it in six months, you need to ha have that really set out and um, at the beginning because obviously the tenant in six months' time might say, well, I don't want to move, and you kind of just put them out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You need to obviously go through that whole notice period. So, yeah, that's a good point, James, as well, obviously. Um, I think there's a lot um, involved in keeping tenants, obviously, for long term in a property. I mean, We've all been in hotels and Airbnbs with terrible water pressure and, and cheap fittings and things. And obviously it could kind of take um, it could take the sheen off things when you're living in a hotel room or something or an Airbnb, like I say, with uh, kind of these defects. But obviously you get to come home after that. Whereas if you've got all these kind of niggling things in a rental property where somebody is living in it as their home every day, I think showers are a really uh, important one, um, difficult windows and... Uh, maybe dodgy locks on doors and all the things that obviously we've dealt with uh, over the years, Karen, and on, on a weekly basis sometimes. Um, but it's important to kind of address those issues. I mean, they're all just small, maybe niggly things, but if, if you've got three or four of them or two or three of them in one property and somebody's having to live with them every day, that could become quite, um, it could become quite disheartening to, to put up with that all the time. And then that ends up in tenants moving on. And in the end, you continually have this um, turnover. Um, every six months to a year even, which is which could be costly, it could have um, it increases wear and tear on a property as well, tenants moving in and out. Um, so ideally to address all these small issues for a, a minimal cost at the time, rather than leave them, it could cost you a lot more in the long run in terms of um, tenancies ending and having to be relet and things again. With the, I'm sure you've seen a lot of that over the years where minor repairs could be, could have, could have obviously um, save the tenant moving on. Yeah, obviously, just for the sake of sending in a handyman to be able to just deal with all these little issues and a wonder in that it'd be done and you've got a happy tenant, your property's well looked after, as opposed to somebody having to live with them on a daily basis 
and then it eventually gets to the point where they're, they're not settled because all these things are annoying them so they do they end up moving on and you're then having to find a new tenant who resultably is probably going to end up being in the same situation as well if these issues aren't resolved so it's so much easier just to send somebody in have them done even the thing is as well sometimes it's issues that a landlord could even pop in and resolve themselves it's not even like big things that need a lot of money spent on them or a lot of time spent on them it's just these little niggles that could just be resolved to make a happy tenant and a well looked after property yeah i mean over the years karen and on a on a regular basis as agents ourselves we see ourselves nipping in and sorting minor things and doing things just to even just before a tenancy or even if a tenancy's just started and you always in the other day spraying some mold off of a bathroom just <laughs> the yeah but it's all those things <laughs> obviously uh, and that is a really minor thing but we can yeah. have a really big impact on uh, exactly. a person's obviously a uh, perception of how the property is kept and looked after if, if you go in and maybe there's something's marked and thought for, for the sake of maybe just wiping it down to look mm -hmm. better um yeah and i think that that kind of demonstrates a good agent or a good landlord and i think if you if you're a landlord or investor um, and you're using an agent obviously you, you need to kind of make sure that they're doing these these things um and and prepare to do all these uh, things for you as a managing agent or, or advise you that this is what you need to be doing and you need to be prepared to to go in and do all these minor things um or get somebody to go in and do them if need be because it is, it is really down to the tenants kind of uh, comfort and satisfaction in the property um because ultimately in the long run it's going to end up and the tenants wanting to move on and if you're looking for a uh, long-term tenants then that's not the way to to get around it so um and and i think always to remember as well you could claim repairs back as tax tax deductible expenses um so avoid the temptation of maybe cheap and short-term fixes um i think uh, i think instead like or maybe like long-term value um and it'll obviously increase your investment and and remedy everything as though uh, and remedy everything as though it's like your buy to let that you live in your buy to let i mean i think um people have different standards to live in i think in your personal your personal home might be very different from your rental rental properties but i think you have to have them at a, a standard where you think i, I would live in here uh, and i think a lot of landlords do have that approach and it's quite a good approach whereas if you were standing in a property and think would i live in here and if the answer is no then you need, there's an issue um i think we do that a lot Karen, if, and if landlords or investors ask us to list something or go out and have a look at something and what do we think then the first thing we do is would i live in here if, if, if it comes to it and, and then if the answer is no we need to feed that back and tell them why um i'm sure you've obviously relayed that kind of information back or, or do relay that information back regularly to, to, to landlords yeah, quite often, obviously, when a new property is coming to the market, a landlord will be like, could you go in and have a look at it and tell me what it needs? So yeah. we can go in and evaluate and be like, right, that really needs to come out or that needs fixed. This is what needs done. So then when it comes to the point where they've got a tenant moving in, these little niggly things have been resolved. So you've then got it. It sets quite a good stance with the tenant in the first instance that you're putting your best foot forward with the property in a good condition. And they're not moving in and being like, oh, this isn't working, this isn't like this. So it saves you having as many teeth and issues at the start of a tenancy if you're just addressing these prior to the property being let out. Yeah. And and if it's a new purchase by to let and like they're doing renovations, like we're obviously doing quite a lot just now, um, it's, it's fine to take the tenant in. In fact, it's sometimes good to take the tenant in or to, sh or to demonstrate to potential tenants like this, this property is in the middle of renovation, but this is going to be done and this is going to be done and... Do you know what I mean? And go through and show them everything that's going to be done because if they go in and see a new kitchen uh, in, in the process of being fitted and the floors are up so new carpets are gone down and they smell of fresh paint and do you know what I mean? That sets a good tone at the beginning of a tenancy um, before it's even started. Um, and I think what would we just done the one in Cooper? I mean, we done a, I done a walkthrough on that. It was just a shell. There was nothing in it. <laughs> uh, and we got the tenant through uh, through that video. Uh, and it was completed, uh, I went there yesterday, that was three weeks, so three weeks it's taken from the shell that it was three weeks ago to it being finished yesterday, the final clean and the bits and, there was a couple of bits and pieces finished yesterday and I've done the walk show and it looks amazing and I believe you're moving the new tenant in on Monday, Ken. I am. Yep, he's coming up here to study uh, and he loves that and it's perfect for him um, and it's a brand new apartment basically. Um, so yeah, I mean that's the kind of thing you want. That's how you want to kind of um, 
set the standard, I think, really. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of simple and uh, easy jobs to fix, and they add a sense of carefree comfort when petty problems don't exist, like we've just discussed. Um, and obviously, you can um, you can claim uh, the payers back as uh, tax deductible expenses. Um, and um, is there anything in the, your buy to let that's starting to look tired? Keeping your property up to date has a direct impact on increasing, increasing your monthly income and the value of your investment, as well as demand from tenants and holding on to them. Um, a good looking and powerful shower makes all the difference in starting the day in a good mood instead of a bad one. Mixer taps and the hose uh, don't cut it anymore, so an independent thermostatically controlled unit is an inexpensive and highly visual upgrade. Uh, Kim, do you remember uh, the holes with the mixer taps on the uh, for a shower? I know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get that quite. Have you quite missed that one? But uh, yeah, well, obviously they they obviously used to be quite popular, but I mean they, they just didn't cut it anymore. And I think everybody um, is so busy nowadays and uh, working, and do you know I mean to get up and have a, a nice shower in the morning um, is really important to a lot of people. And to have um, to not have that, I think. For the for the cost that uh, is to install, to not have that is would be silly, I think, because modern life nowadays really you need to have a good shower, I think, especially for a working a working couple or even a working family, um, who are all busy and obviously like to use a shower in the morning, um, and th that is that is what a, a big one that comes back to us sometimes is showers and like I say taps and locks and all these minor things as well, um. And um, in the kitchen, we've come a long way from the solid plate electric hobs and dark brown ovens. Um, even if they still function, they wouldn't be energy efficient and they drag down uh, everything around them. So replace any dated appliances with good quality new models. Stainless steel goes with everything. Uh, white looks fresh and clean and black is a dash of sleek style, I think, as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely kitchen style and appliances is important. I think the kitchen is such an important room in any house. Uh, and I think for it to look nice and clean and stylish to a certain degree um, definitely makes all the difference. And, and doing a uh, manage, project managing these um, refurbs recently, uh, you definitely see that. And you definitely see the benefit of having a nice kitchen and nice appliances. Would you agree with that, Kim? Yeah, it just makes it look so much fresher and you've got a tenant that's actually going to want to spend time in it and look after it because, like I say, it's done up nicely. Um, the ones that we've had recently and done viewings that people have walked in and be like, oh, I love the kitchen because yeah. we've got white units, black worktops, appliances all look fresh. It's nice grey flooring. So it is just everything comes together for it and it does look so different and it makes such a difference for a tenant being in it. But um, obviously, like I say, we've had tenants that have been in the properties for over a decade now so you're going to get ones that are maybe had the original kitchen in it and it's now coming to the point where obviously when you're doing inspections you can see that it's maybe past its best um so i think taking things like that into account as well obviously if you've got a long-term tenant throughout that tenancy you are perhaps going to have to upgrade uh, some rooms in the property just obviously so they're in good work in order again and just it keeps things a bit fresher as well as opposed to you having a kitchen that's perhaps the original one that's still there that's falling apart for example so uh, yeah. obviously we've had a lot more recently that ended up well at least tenants been in for i don't even know how long a long time and um he put a new kitchen in it because it was it was dated it was falling but it was past its best anyway so he did he went in and put a new kitchen in it uh, so that tenant now has a new kitchen and is quite happy in the property so it's just even making upgrades obviously not always quite as big as that but just making these upgrades throughout yeah. your tenancy if you do have a long-term tenant can make all the difference to them yeah i think like you say it doesn't always need to be you have to go in and put a new kitchen or a new mm -hmm. bathroom i mean it's maybe just going in and doing like i say all these small minor repairs to keep the place um functioning well and uh, but then if you have got like i say extensively long tenants uh, tenants then you will then need to review right that kitchen's been in there for 10 plus years or the heating system that boiler's on its way out uh, we're coming into maybe a bad winter maybe i should look to get the heating done now and then, and, and that builds up, it, it continues a good relationship with your tenant. Because I think, look, obviously, the, the landlord's obviously uh, here to look after the property and, and demonstrating that. So it makes them want to stay. Um, I think we've done a few new heating systems recently as well, um, obviously, because they're, they're paid and it's time to obviously upgrade them. Um, 
in, in kitchens and things as well. I think um, you see, obviously, these these refurbished ones and new, newly uh, uh, finished properties. It's such a it's it's such a delight to walk around and do a viewing in a property like that and show it to people. And um, I think we had a couple of the, the two new ones in Cooper that were that they are like brand spanking new, completely new um, renovations from an old building that's been converted. Um, and I mean the interest in them is just unreal. Um, but doing the views at them was it was brilliant. I mean it's just to walk around around something that's just brand spanking new. Uh, and be able to say this could potentially be your home. People people love it, um, and it's good. Um, but I think in existing lens, obviously, um, scruffy paintwork will always uh, will always be a, a kind of output, um, and scuffs and things on walls. Uh, I think when uh, there's a turnaround of a tenancy, need to be addressed. I think if they're just left, the your, your eyes automatically drawn to scuffs or skippings or walls, or even if. Um, a paint job has been done if it's not been done properly. I think when you see uh, paint over light switches and uh, sockets and things, it just looks oh, it's, it's awful. Um, and that's something that um, obviously we can't, we try and demonstrate to tenants that if you're going to be like if they're allowed to decorate, that needs to be done properly. There's nothing worse when we get a property back and we've tried to paint a room <laughs> uh, and they've done it one night and just a slap dash painting the kids' bedroom and. Blue for blue is a really bad colour. We've had a few blue bedrooms in in the years, Karen. Mm -hmm. um, and I think yeah, you'll agree. Obviously, a paint work, a fresh paint works good, but as long as it's done properly. Yeah, obviously we get quite a lot of tenants that maybe move in somewhere and they're like, oh, can I do some decorating? And it's like that's fine, but just let us know what it is that you're looking to do so we can check it with the landlord and make sure that you're doing it up to like a good enough standard. I had a viewer the other day asking me if he could paint the curtains. And obviously clocking his clothes, he was a painter and decorator anyway. So I was like, I'll check with the landlord, but given your career, I'm sure it wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> yeah, that one that one kinda of works out well then, but uh, yeah, we've seen a few uh we've DIY seen a few ones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just quickly obviously Angela's jumping in there. Morning, Angela. Morning. Um yeah, so yeah, I think paint jobs and things are good. And I think choosing the colours of the paint as well. Um I think obviously everybody knows grey and white is in this like soft Nord Nordic grey colour, um, which I think everybody's it's kind of... In your of, background. <laughs> yeah, 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 in the background. Um, but um, yeah, everybody's kind of adopted this grey and white. And But I mean, it's it's the modern touch. It looks really fresh. It looks really clean. It's quite chic to a certain extent, um, as opposed to obviously Magnolia and beige. And, and do you know what I mean? That kind of, that time has passed. Um, so yeah, colour schemes as well. I mean, it's quite good as well if you're if um, if you're doing viewings with tenants. I think on a on a, a new property which is in the midst of having things done, and you have somebody potentially set up and things aren't finished, to kind of ask their opinion. What did what would they like um, as maybe colour scheme or certain finishes? Like maybe they would want chrome handles, or do you know if you're putting a new kitchen um, and what kind of like handles do you want on other units? Can so and you could make it a wee bit personal without obviously. Um, restricting yourself if it needs to be relet, but um, like I say, if you're looking for a long-term tenant, and that would really uh, to engage with somebody who's potentially going to be moving in and asking them how they want the property to be finished. Uh, if you're if you're doing a renovation, obviously, um, that creates a really good relationship for the outset. Um, and we've done that. We've done that um, quite a lot in the, um, throughout the years, Karen, with people that are moving into properties, and we're like, look, this is going to be redecorated. Do you have any preference, maybe? The carpets or the colour of the walls, um, and and you get a really positive response when you go with people and, and have that kind of conversation. Yeah, I think it just shows them that the landlord is actually caring about them because obviously I think there is there can be a bit of a stigma about old tight landlords, but it just shows people that you know what you do have a landlord that cares about the property and wants to make it a home for you to live in. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of great landlords. I mean, we have we had one the other week and it was um, the wardrobes are a bit past their best and a bit tired and dated so we know the landlord's happy to replace them and it's like right what would you like and it's going to end up being white wardrobes that go in it so it does it just shows that as a tenant that looks after the property really well so it does they kind of go hand in hand if you've got a tenant that's looking after it you want a landlord that's going to look after their side of it as well yeah. and uh, yeah it just makes the tenants feel like they're a lot more kind of considered in the process for it yeah, yeah, I think it's it's good because you, you like you say you build that relationship to the outset, 
um, and can and then either the landlord or us as agents continue that throughout. Um, and when it comes to times when things do need repaired or looked at or, or the tenant has any kind of problem, they feel uh, comfortable enough to, to pick up the phone and just phone us and say, this is the situation. Whereas if they don't feel like they've got a relationship like that with the agent or with the landlord, then they'll kind of shy away from bringing things to their attention or, or, or feel like they can speak to them direct, whether it be us or the landlord. And that could start to cause a lot of problems and that will affect the longevity of a tenancy because they'll think, oh, I can't approach them, I can't bring uh, my concerns to them. Um, and it could have an effect on the property as well, because if they're not reporting minor issues to you, which at the time might be minor maintenance issues, could then maybe have an effect on the property's condition. And then when they do eventually leave, um, you're left to maybe repair something that has then got a lot worse than what it was when it would have been initially uh, reported and could have been a small repair and then and, to, and obviously through time has ended up being a costly repair. I mean, I'm sure you've seen that um, through the years where people have not been very forthcoming and then obviously something's gotten worse, whereas it could have been rectified uh, sooner. Yeah, just having issues nipped in the bud makes it a lot more cost effective and a lot more damage effective as well. You don't want, if you see the bath on the seal around the bath starting to go, you want to get that fixed as soon as possible, because if not, you're looking at a potential leak um, then decorating, getting the leak fixed, it's everything that follows on from that one little issue that's not been nipped in the bud. So yeah. it's a lot more beneficial just to have things sorted when you first see them and have it rectified. So it's a little repair as opposed to building up and building up to make it a bit more costly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Jim's joining in this morning. <laughs> Jim says, for the majority of landlords, they are happy to reinvest, but I would say that some people shouldn't be landlords as they think it's all take, take, take. That's very true, Jim, and I do agree with that. There, is, there are some people out there that have that kind of approach and attitude, and that is really the wrong attitude to have if you're going to be an investor or a landlord. You really need to be um, involved and uh, really like um, interact with your, your tenant and your agents and or, or have agents who are actively um, interacting with your tenant and building relationships. Um, cause, and that is what is going to um, result in a long-term tenant. Um, and have Angela, Angela's agreeing with that one as well, which I'm sure a lot of you as well. Um, and I think um, staying in touch with your tenants um, and, and keeping um, an open line of communication and just even just checking in with them time to time. Um, an, exercise, an exercise which can build a relationship and kind of, and kind of nurtures a relationship. I mean, even if you just pick up the phone to your tenant or your landlord, just to see how they are, or even just to um, give them a, a, an update on things, just uh, because obviously things have kind of progressed and maybe you've not touched base for a wee while, because I think you don't want to always just be picking up the phone um, to love between landlords and tenants and mediate in between just for all the bad things. Do you know what I mean? Um, discuss the good, the good points and, and keep that line of communication open. Um, I think inspections are obviously important and we have uh, quarterly inspections carried out on properties um, and it's a good point to um, a, have a chat with the tenant, address any issues um, and show that you care about the tenants, I think, um, and, and care about how they live in the property and their enjoyment in the property. I mean, Karen, you've done a lot of inspections over your years and uh, you see that relationship, you build with certain uh, people and, and the tenants that you go out to and then because you become the regular person who's coming round or, or, on the, or on the other end of the phone, they feel like, uh, I mean, I've got a lot of tenants and some that have been with us and moved on and they're still in contact with me because I've had that relationship with them throughout the tenancy. And I'm, I'm sure you've had uh, quite good relationships with tenants through the years doing inspections and dealing with repairs and things. It is. It's, it's, it's a nice experience to be able to go out and speak to them. And we have properties that ideally they wouldn't need to be inspected because nothing really goes wrong in them if they do the tenants pick up the phone the tenants look after them so well but it's still going out and just seeing how they're getting on in the property um obviously sometimes there'll be things that tenants perhaps don't pick up on as well so it's good to have an agent that knows what they're looking for to be able to be like right you've got a little bit of damp there we need to get that fixed or just little things like oh, the bath needs resealed so it's good to have a fresh set of eyes in the property because i think when you're living in somewhere you can sometimes become a little bit complacent and yep. you don't notice some little things when they do change so it's good to have that fresh set of eyes to go in and have a look make sure the property is all safety compliant still as well so the tenants are safe in their property 
and uh, just building up that relationship with them as well. We have a lot of lovely tenants that I would phone them up and be like, I'm coming out. So, and they were great with it. And obviously I've got, we have ones that live in the same village with and every time I see them, they're always waving, so polite, so nice. And it is, it's, you build up that relationship with them. They're not yeah. just tenants, they are people that you're, you're around quite a lot, just obviously being in and out and speaking to them. So it is, it's a good thing just to build up a relationship. So even if there's not something wrong in the property, it's good to, to go out and do an inspection just to keep that relationship up with the tenant. Yeah, I think um, an important thing that you said there is obviously a fresh pair of eyes. And it's true that um, tenants might not always know how to identify some problems um, or might not even be aware that there is an issue um, to report. It could be something that obviously um, we are able to pick up on in an inspection. So they are, they are really important to to have the opportunity not just to build relationship with the tenant and make them feel important and remind them that you're there and that that's what we're there to do and obviously make sure that things are okay but then it is to try and identify problems that maybe they are unaware of um, and things that could be um, causing damage maybe under underlying damage that will, will be a costly repair in the long run so yeah a fresh pair of eyes is a really good point there Kim and I think um, like you say anybody I think when they become a familiar and accustomed to something do become a, a wee bit complacent like you say um so to have somebody come in and, and look at it from a, a different perspective um is always important and sometimes um minor repairs can go unnoticed by a tenant so um inspections are important and i think if you're you've got your agent make sure that they're doing them i think inspections have been they have been difficult over the last uh, year year and a half um uh, obviously things are back to I'll say normal, but we're not quite there in terms of obviously our ability to to be arranging inspections and things that obviously we had a lot that were not done through obviously lockdown and obviously people's, uh, people were kind of wary about access to their properties and things, which is quite understandable, but there are safe ways to do it. Uh, and we still obviously demonstrate um, social, uh, social distancing rules and things as well um, and take all the necessary precautions when we are entering anybody's property. Um, but I think not just it's not just for the landlord the inspection. The inspection is is there for the tenant as well. Um, from a personal and obviously um, a, a maintenance point of view as well. Um, but yeah, Ken. So obviously, I mean, inspections and things and access to property has been difficult lately. I mean, have you have you seen it, this kind of start to return to a wee bit normality? <laughs> Yeah, obviously during lockdown, obviously we couldn't get access to properties for obviously restrictions and just people's safety as well. It's something that we have to take into account, whether it's inspections, doing viewings. Obviously, it's been something that we have to be very mindful of. So I constantly walk around with a big bottle of sanitizer now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so it's just obviously taking into account everybody's safety for it. But I think now things are starting to get a wee bit more back to normal. Um, so obviously we're back to carrying out inspections, obviously with safety measures in place. So um, it's just obviously making sure the tenants are comfortable with us coming into the property and uh, just so we can have a lead look and it's explaining to them this is not a big invasive inspection. It's just so we can make sure that the property is being looked after. There's You've not got any issues. If there's anything you want to speak to us about, it's good to have that face to face and we can actually see the issue as opposed to somebody coming on the phone and trying to explain it. And sometimes it's really hard, so it's easier. I know when we have situations like that, I'm like, can I just come out and, and have a look? So yeah. it makes it so much easier, especially as having local agents as well. I mean, most of our properties, I think the furthest that we've got is about 25 minutes away. So it's being able just to nip out and go and have a look at it if a tenant's got an issue. And um, yeah, so obviously we're back to doing inspections now and getting them all booked in. Yeah, I think that that's what you said. The great thing about obviously the Kingdom of Five, you could you could reach anywhere within like about half an hour or, or yeah. so. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so it, it doesn't take long. And, and if Sometimes people um, of tenants are phoning in and they've got issues and it's, sometimes it's quite difficult to to explain things over the phone. I mean, it, it's become a lot easier now. We have obviously video calls and things. I mean, we do a lot through WhatsApp and things with tenants and landlords and do you know what you need to get a bit? But it doesn't always come close to obviously actually being there and looking at something. And if we need to jump in the car and go and have a look at it in, in person to get a better idea, then then we do that. And and that makes, that makes the tenant feel important. Like, obviously, I'm not just getting brushed aside here they are actually obviously serious about obviously looking after me and the property and and and, and, and quite rightly we, they should be um i think yeah it's very important 
to make the tenants feel important and kind of give them like that VIP treatment. Um, if you make somebody feel important and, and, and take that time, it, it will pay dividends in the end. Um, yeah, like the, the VIP treatment for tenants, I mean, you need to look at tenants um, and how, I mean, they're all on an, on an individual basis. I mean, tenants are all different and people all have different expectations and it's all about managing their expectations. And I think if uh, you've got tenants who have different levels of lifestyles, maybe somebody like things maybe are a little bit different from other people. Um, and that's a good point at the beginning to, to kind of set out um, maybe different under the finishes and properties and things. If you know you're going to have a long term tenant um, and they're saying, look, I'm going to be here at least five years um, and you're, you're obviously doing upgrades and they want maybe a wee bit more uh, an expensive appliance or maybe a wee bit different finish. Do you know what I mean? If they're like, I would rather have like chrome handles in here and, and then they're all the kind of touches that you will secure a longer term tenant. And I think that that, um, that will that will make people a lot happier and feel more comfortable living in the property. And people will happily pay more money for people for properties that are finished to a higher standard. And that's something that we've seen quite a lot of lately. Mm -hmm. yeah, when you're doing um, the, the all these new refunds and new properties we've got coming on that are finished to such a high standard, people are prepared to pay more. It's, yeah, people are spending a lot more time in their homes just now. Obviously, there's you can't disappear on holiday as easily as you could so pay, the work home balance is a lot more different now you've got people spending a lot more time in home or a lot of people are still working from home as well so it's having that environment that they're comfy in so just if you've got something that is done up nicely they'll pay that extra to stay in it because like I say they're spending a lot more time in it they want that nice home to be staying in so it does it will affect obviously the price that you're able to achieve for the rental return on your property yeah. if you have it done up that bit nicer yeah, definitely. Uh, Angela's saying here, um, offering an, ex uh, an excellence of service by a quick pop in, uh, out of the office, round back to check on something for a tenant, the beauty of a local agent. And uh, Angela, Angela's a, a tenant herself, so she'll know firsthand how important it is to have that um, from an agent um, or a landlord. Um, so definitely, I think that's just, and it's that's a really small thing to do uh, to make a big difference. Um, and speaking of obviously small things to do, I think obviously we've spoke a lot about um, the finish of a property um, and how it's obviously kind of put together at the end. And I think that there's that there's small things like uh, even window cleaning, uh, dirty windows that are a really bad one um, that just get they get forgotten about. Um, and there's nothing worse than you could have a nice finished property and it's got dirty windows, um, and they really need to be clean for the start of a tenancy. I mean, because like I say, you're, you're trying to set a tone at the beginning. So if you move somebody in and like, well, the windows are filthy, then they're going to think, well, that's fine for them to be filthy. Do you know what I mean? And, and so you kind of come at the end of the tenancy or they say, oh, the, the windows are dirty because, well, they were like that to begin with. Uh, and you never set out that tone with the tenant. Um, Jim said here, obviously, it will also affect um, your occupancy rate, which is key in getting the highest returns. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, the longevity of tenancy and your occupancy rate is so important from an investment point of view. Um, if you are looking for long term passive income as an investor with buy to let property, um, you need to have a look at your occupancy rate of your property and keep that high. Um, and that is only going to be a high occupancy rate if you do all these things and have all these factors which will uh, increase the length of your tenancies and have happy tenants who want to live there uh, for a long time. And I'm sure you'll agree with that, Kim. Yeah, one thing that we see as well is obviously um, properties vacant periods. If you have a nicer property, it's going to fill a lot faster. I mean, um, one that we've just had, it just went on the market at the start of the week and I was discussing tenants with the landlord just on Friday, well, yesterday, because mm. it's so nice and it's people want to take it a lot quicker. So like you're looking at reduced um, vacant periods as well, because if your property's back on the market, you're going to attract a tenant a lot quicker if you have a nice property for them to move into. The nice ones get snapped up quickly. Um, obviously, the ones that have maybe um, been a wee bit more tired or have some like niggly issues, you're going to get people are going to not want to move into it as much. So you're going to have a bit of a longer time to find a new tenant for it, as opposed to the ones that are moving condition ready, all nice, all fresh. Uh, they do get snapped up a lot quicker. Yeah, definitely. And I think... Um... As well as having the the property itself really nice, I think obviously, like you say, can people spend a lot more time in their homes, and I think outside space is quite important as well. 
uh, and garden spaces and things. I mean, not everybody's green fingered, but uh, it doesn't. You don't have to have uh, that a, a space which needs a lot of maintenance. It could be a low maintenance garden, but as long as it's nice uh, and tidy and and easy to maintain, I think that is really important now more more than ever that people have some sort of outside space, um, even if it's just an area to sit. Uh, but obviously, if you've got um, family homes and people with kids and things, you're going to want a lawn area or a patio area or you know, something to where you could enjoy outside. Um, and I think obviously that's become such an important thing over the last year, year and a half. Um, and you'll have seen a lot of uh, requests for outside space when you're dealing with uh, new properties and tenancies, Karen. Yeah, garden space is such in high demand. But if you have garden space and off street parking, you're already on to a winner because, I mean, people want their cars off the street these days. And obviously, then you've got the outdoor space to be able to sit and enjoy the sun. Um, I think even when you're doing viewings, you kind of have to set the expectations when it comes to a garden. Um, let's try and do that before I even have somebody lined up for it when I'm doing the viewing. So obviously, we had a new one in Cooper just recently. Um, and it, the garden in it is lovely and they've got lovely plants and it's been really well looked after. So ideally it was trying to find somebody that's got a wee bit of a green finger that's going to want to look after it well. And I did, I've got somebody that's a keen gardener. So obviously it's trying to find somebody that will match the property as well. Uh, we had another one this week that has, it's just a big, it's a big garden that it's got, but um, it, all it needs is a, a lawnmower. So um, it's saying to viewers, oh, you'll need to invest in a lawnmower now because obviously it's it's got that great bit of space and obviously it needs to be looked after. Um, obviously garden maintenance is a, a key as well as property maintenance. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things I picked up there when you were saying, obviously, um, with that property recently, you were ideally looking for someone that was going to be able to maintain the garden, found somebody that's really been fingered. Um, and obviously that's all part of the, the reference and vetting process to find the right tenant for the, the right property. Do you know what I mean? I think I think they're the one that you're talking about. And obviously we had an abundance of interest in that. And like you say, like we said earlier uh, in the show there, unfortunately we could only pick one person and it, it might be that and it has to be the right person for that tenant and uh, for that tenancy. And that was the person. So unfortunately everybody else may be disappointed, but it's just that that's the whole process. And, and I think people need to be mindful of the fact that um, there are several other applicants on uh, every rental property at the moment and unfortunately it's not a it's not a biased decision or a discriminatory decision it's just a decision that has to be made and unfortunately only one person could be chosen so yeah definitely and I think they'll be, they'll be perfect for that property then Karen because obviously they need to look after the garden but I mean not everybody like I say is green fingered and um, so if it means maybe having a gardener come in um, I mean you could have a gardener nip around every other week fairly Fairly cheaply, um, but I have a lot of like, landlords who even, like say if there's a bigger garden, provide a lawnmower. I mean, you're not landlords are not obligated to provide gardening tools or anything like that, but sometimes it's a nice touch that the landlord has left maybe a, a lawnmower and a strimmer in the shed for use. Uh, obviously, be aware if, if these items obviously need replaced or repaired or things, it, it is the liability of the landlord then because they're providing them as part of the let. But, I mean, it's a nice touch if you want to do that. Uh, especially if there's quite a big garden space to, to maintain. But yeah, you're, you're, you're right. Garden space has become so important um, recently and, and people do look for it. Um, like I say, even if it's just a wee, a, a wee area to sit out and enjoy the sun. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, the um, the garden situation obviously is, um, is obviously down to the tenant as part of the tenancy. Um, so it needs to be set out at the beginning, like you say, look, you need to maintain the garden. because, um, And that's one thing that falls back into inspections as well. Um, we get to obviously then put eyes on the garden situation and whether it's been maintained. And, and then discuss with the tenant, are you struggling to look after the garden? I've got one actually like that. Um, and I was round uh, fairly recently and she's she's had some health issues and things and not been able to have the garden done and I'm like you should have you should have approached us we've got gardeners we could have had somebody come around and tend it and she's like oh I didn't know that um that you would do that and I was like of course we would so and we're working together to obviously get her somebody to sort the garden because some of the issues and things have got a bit overgrown and, and she's not able to do it um but without me obviously attending the property I would never have knew that uh, and I'm sure you've had instances where um you've been around to the property care and, and picked up on things um and then been able to help them remedy that 
Um, and that's the beauty of obviously property inspections. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, just being able to nip around and have a wee look at it. Sometimes the tenants don't even notice they've maybe been caught up at work and um, they'll be like, oh, that's fine, I'll get the grass cut this weekend or, oh, my lawnmower's broken down, but I've got a new one that's coming. So it is, it's just checking and making sure that they're all right. Um, we do have, I think there's the odd one that it's like they do have quite extensive or fancy gardens that do need properly maintained. Yeah. Uh, so I think that there's the odd landlord that we've set the rent a little bit higher, but that includes a gardener. So the tenants get to enjoy the space and the landlord has a peace of mind that that garden is being looked after. Yeah, so I mean, it's just tailoring it to whatever suits obviously the, the situation for the garden, the tenant, and so everything works out well. Yeah, yeah we've got quite a few obviously properties in maybe like rural, semi-rural areas where um, they're kind of countryside gardens as, as such and they take a lot of upkeep and they sometimes come with a gardener but obviously it's um, it's included obviously with the rental amount which is maybe maybe just slightly higher to compensate for that but people are prepared to pay that to have that maintained and they don't have to worry about it plus they have the enjoyment of that space being um, obviously maintained to a good standard for them to live and enjoy it. Um, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I, I was going to say, obviously, we do have a few um, that have gardeners included. Um, so I think, yeah, with with a little extra thought, um, you can design a buy to let home um, where tenants want to live for for many years. And I think we've demonstrated that um, in a lot of the points that we've discussed this morning. Um, and uh, I think all these factors contribute to to having long term tenants. Um, and I think the rewards are uh, plentiful and, and tangible, really. Uh, really, if you've got uh, all these things in place and done properly right from the outset, uh, right at the beginning, before the tenants even come in to the property and continue throughout the tenancy, you're going to have happy long-term tenants. Um, wouldn't you agree with that, Kim? Yeah, I think a little little difference makes a lot. Obviously, a little bit of work that you do just to keep the property up to a good standard make can make so much of a difference to a tenant yeah i mean we've helped quite a lot of landlords over the years uh, find really good tenants and um, it's actually a pleasure to to look after the property for them with those tenants in place and um, like you say you've built up quite a lot of relationships doing inspections over the years and um like i say i say this as well obviously there's tenants that come back to us um that um have, have, have been tenants with us in the past and still in contact with us as the agent just because we had such a good relationship throughout the tenancy. I mean, do you have that, Karen? Yeah, obviously we've got tenants that have moved on, but you still hear from them now and again. So it is, it's nice just having that relationship with them and knowing that they are still quite happy to like come back to you. Um, or sometimes as well, they've maybe gone on to a different property, they've had a change of circumstances, but then it's come around that they're looking for something else and they're like, well, I rented from you before, can you help me find somewhere again? And it's nice that they have that relationship that they do want to come back. To you for for help or just obviously for a wee catch up and um, obviously our offices are all local as well so we have landlords and tenants just popping in and um, i know me enjoys it when one of our landlords comes for a visit with their little dog <laughs> so yeah. um, it does it's that relationship that they that they feel that we are approachable enough just to come to us when they need it yeah it definitely makes you feel like you're doing something right when you have that kind of feedback and we've even got tenants that um obviously move from one property, maybe their circumstances change. I mean, we've had people, their families grow or their their job location maybe changes and they move from one property with us to another property with us. Um, and it's just quite reassuring that you're doing um, things properly and um, you you are demonstrating that you care about tenants and, and, and the properties and things that they want to continue to let with us and, and have us uh, manage as an agent. I mean, I've had people come to me in the past and say, Oh, I'd much rather you you manage it than deal with uh, a landlord direct. I think a lot a lot of people maybe are hesitant sometimes with dealing with landlords direct, um, which uh, which obviously is understandable. With it, sometimes landlords get such bad press, which I don't think is very fair, because there's a lot of good landlords out there. Um, Jim commenting here that he in the past has managed to have an occupancy rate of 99.9 percent .9 due to the care and attention uh, I give to my clients, and I would agree with that, Jim. And obviously, being an agent for uh, yourself, obviously, throughout the years, I know the kind of standard they finish uh, and the care and attention that um, that is uh, expected of, uh, of the agent towards the tenant. Uh, and, and that's how you get a high occupancy rate like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the, 
the feedback and the continued um, tenancies with uh, long-term tenants does give you definitely satisfaction that you're doing things right. Um, and, and like I say, obviously, if you're if you're looking for that high occupancy rate with long-term tenancies, then you need to have that care factor, and you need to definitely be quite hands-on and involved with the tenant um, in terms of communication and also kind of proactive rather than reactive. I mean, it's so easy to be a managing agent and just wait for the phone to ring and then deal with things as they happen. But I mean, I think to think outside the box and think, right, okay, um, I mean, there's, there'll be certain properties and you think, right, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that one. And if you lift the phone to the landlord or the tenant and say, right, um, I'm just here to have a wee chat about whatever it, it may be, and they'll think, well, that, and, and that'll, that'll resonate with them and it'll stick with them that they're obviously taking the initiative to come to me first before I have to to come to them and, and report something. And and that that definitely sets a really, really good uh, standard and, and, and the tone for things uh, throughout a tenancy. And like I say, picking up the phone to a landlord or a tenant without having to be prompted um, and not always just to deliver bad news um, is definitely something that I think every agent should uh, should be doing. Um, otherwise, you're not going to get the feedback and the the approval from tenants and landlords like we have just discussed there, there and now, Karen. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I think it also given, like you say, giving landlords the good news as well. Like when I've been out and done an inspection, if a tenant's like redecorated a room with approval and it's looking really <laughs> nice, <laughs> like I'll put on the inspection, like tenants redecorate, you've yeah, done a good job, like, and or like you still like to put the good things in it as well. It's not just focusing on the negatives. Obviously, property management can be quite negative because you're dealing with everybody's issues in their house. Um, so it is nice to focus on the good things as well that come along. Yeah, I'd like you say, I mean, it can feel sometimes a wee bit disheartening in property management, but you're there to deal with issues and resolve them for people. So um, it's trying to make it's trying to make everything positive. Uh, and I think, like I say, being proactive about things and getting out there in front of things before they become a situation which is really negative and, and diffusing that and, and resolving it for everybody that's involved. I think mediation is a big part of um, having a, a really good uh, long standing tenancy. Um, definitely. So, um, but yeah, any final thoughts for this morning, Kim? Because we're approaching the hour mark, and I just thought we could wrap it up here. I, I think just a little bit of effort will go a long way. Whether it's a landlord putting in to those finishing touches, just to make sure property is nice and fresh, so you've got a tenant that wants to feel comfy in their home and look after it. Yeah, I think for me, it's definitely setting that tone right for the outset, for the very beginning. Um, from the standard of finish that you present the property to the tenant, uh, building that relationship um, right from the beginning uh, with the tenant and the landlord and, and having that um, transparency at the beginning right through the tenancy. Um, and like I say, uh, thinking outside the box and definitely being proactive rather than reactive. Um, and Jim, uh, Jim said here that uh, show people you care. And I think that's that is definitely a good one that, uh, yeah, show people you care and show the tenants that you do actually care about them and the property. Um, it will go a long way and um, it will stay with the tenant um, that we are uh, mindful and caring about them as a tenant um, and it will allow them to, to feel freely to speak to us about things. And it just makes long-term tenancies uh, so much easier. Um, and ultimately, it will be beneficial to your investment and it will increase your occupancy rate, as Jim stated there earlier. So. Yeah, so yeah, that was brilliant, Kim. Thanks for joining me this morning. A lot of good points there, and I think um, I think a lot of people agree with um, a lot of what we've covered, um, and hopefully take something from it. Okay, right, that's great. Thanks for joining me this morning, guys, um, and I'll speak to you later, Kim. Okay. Bye. See you later. Bye.